This demonstration will walk through the process for registering a new entity in SAM in order to be eligible for grants and other federal financial assistance. Before beginning, I want to clarify the term entity. In SAM, entity is a catch-all term that includes prime contractors, organizations applying for assistance awards, those receiving loans, sole proprietors, corporations, partnerships, and any federal government agencies desiring to do business with the government. In this webinar, we will concentrate on entities that have never registered in central contractor registration and that wish to be eligible for government grants and other federal financial assistance and what they need to do. Before you start, you will need to have a SAM user account. Anyone can create an account in SAM and this process can be started at any time. To create an individual SAM user account, select the Create an Account link located in the upper right of the home page, at which point you will be taken to an overview page. This page provides information on the benefits of registering for a SAM account, as well as what is required to create a SAM account. When ready, click the Create an Account button. First, you must enter your personal information. You will note that only very basic information is required, including first and last name, as well as an email address. Make sure that you have access to this email address because SAM will use it for all SAM-related communications. You must also enter your phone number and country. Once you have entered the necessary information, scroll down and click Next. On this page, you must provide specific account information. First, I will create a username and password. As you type into these fields, the system will display a green check mark when you have met the requirements. Next, select three unique security questions and enter responses. Once completed, scroll down and click Next to continue to the summary page. On this page, you are given the opportunity to review the information entered. If you need to make any changes, you can select the Edit button to return to a specific page. If satisfied, scroll down and click Submit to complete the process. After creating the account, a confirmation page will be displayed, which you can save or print for your records. Select Done to continue. Once you create the account, a validation email will be sent to the email address you provided during registration. You will need to click on the link found in the email and log in to activate the account. Upon login, you will be taken to your MySAM page, which is the centralized location for your SAM needs. I will log into an account that I just created. Your email address has now been validated and your account is active. Click Done. Every time you log in, you must accept SAM's terms and conditions. The page that you see here is your My SAM page. This is your centralized location for all functionality that you need to access. For more information on the My SAM page, see the User Management section of the User Guide. 
To start the registration process, select Register New Entity from the left-hand menu under Manage Entity. Your registration will go more quickly if you have some information on hand before you start. This includes gathering the following information. You must have your Data Universal Numbering System, or DUNS number, from Dun & Bradstreet and the name and address associated to that DUNS. If you do not have this, please contact Dun & Bradstreet at 866-705-5711. More information on DUNS numbers can also be found in the Help section of the website, in the User Guide, and the Frequently Asked Questions. You must also have your Taxpayer Identification Number, or TIN, and your entity's name from your W-2. Your Contractor and Government Entity Code, or CAGE Code, is also required if you already have one. If you don't, and you are a U.S.-based registrant, one will be assigned to you during the registration process. If you are an international registrant, that is non-U.S.-based, you will need an NCAGE prior to registering. A web link for where to get an NCAGE can be found in our Frequently Asked Questions. In order to register for grants and other federal financial assistance, you will need to complete the following sections of SAM. Core data, which includes, but is not limited to, DUNS number, name, address, CAGE or NCAGE code, taxpayer identification number, general and financial information, and details about any proceedings in which your entity may currently be involved. If you are a Department of Defense agency, then you will also need your DODAC number. You will also be asked to provide contact information for any mandatory points of contact required based on the information provided during registration. To begin, click the Start Registration button found at the bottom of the page. You will be asked a series of questions. Based on your answers, the system will guide you through the registration process. First, select your entity type. In this demonstration, I will be registering a business or organization that is located in the United States. If you select a different entity type, you may be presented with fields that are different for your entity. Next, you will be asked if you wish to bid on contracts. Again, in this case, we are only interested in grants, so we will select No. For the question about eligibility for grants and federal assistance, select Yes. Only U.S. federal government entities will be able to select that they wish to perform intragovernmental transactions, or IGTs. Since I have selected business or organization as my entity type, the IGT question is not applicable to my registration. Click Next. On the Confirm Purpose of Registration page, you are shown sections that you need to complete and your registration purpose. Since you are registering for Federal Assistance Awards only, you must complete core data and points of contact. Before I begin with the actual data entry, I would like to call your attention to the Content Glossary located on the right side of the page. The glossary will dynamically generate based on the page you are viewing. It will provide definitions for the various terms, as well as links to resources pertaining to the information on the page. The first step to entering core data is to enter a DUNS number, name, and address. Then click Next. 
The system will validate the information you entered with Dun and Bradstreet and return a match if available. You should verify that the information returned from DNB is correct, as that will be the name and address associated with the entity record in SAM. If you disagree with the information returned from DNB, you will need to contact them to make any necessary changes. Once you have saved and verified the results, a draft record will be created in SAM for your entity. Please note that if you do not verify the DUNS number, you will not be able to continue with the registration process. At this point, you will also become the administrator of the record, which gives you the ability to give other users in your organization access to view and edit this record. If you log out after clicking Save and Continue, and prior to completing all mandatory fields, SAM will save your draft record, and you can come back to it later to complete. Next, I'll enter the business information, such as the business start date and fiscal year and close date. Next, I will create a Marketing Partner Identification Number, or MPIN. The MPIN will be used to provide you access to other systems, such as Grants.gov and Past Performance Information Retrieval System, or PEEPERS. Your MPIN acts as your password in these systems, so you should guard it as such. This will be used in the next page as your signature to release your Taxpayer ID Number, or TIN, to the IRS for validation. A mailing address is mandatory, but you may use the Copy Physical Address button to enter this information if your entity only uses one address. Next, I'll enter the taxpayer identification information for the entity. If you are a non-U.S. entity, this information will not be mandatory. On this page, I will complete the TIN consent section, which will submit the TIN information to the IRS for validation. I will need to enter the taxpayer name and address exactly as the information that the IRS has on file. It is not always the same as the DNB name you saw on the previous screen. We recommend that you use the entity's most recent tax return for this information. Once you click Save and Continue, this TIN information will be sent to the IRS for validation, so you will not be able to edit it until a response from IRS, whether it's a match or no match, has been received. Once you have completed the Consent to Disclosure of Tax information, you can now jump to any step in the process by clicking the areas listed on the left side of the page. You do not need to complete the sections in order. However, you will need to complete every step before you can submit your registration. For the purposes of this webinar, we will continue the steps in order. Next, enter your Commercial and Government Entity Code, or CAGE Code. Your CAGE Code is a unique five-character ID number assigned by the Department of Defense automatically via your SAM registration process. If you think you may have a CAGE code already, you can click on the Search CAGE Code link. 
If you are a non-U.S. entity, you will require an NCAGE code in order to complete your registration. If you do not have an NCAGE code, you can click the link displayed on the page to acquire one. For more information on NCAGE codes, please see the Frequently Asked Questions. Next, you must enter general information about your entity. These questions provide you with the opportunity to further identify the type of business or organization you are. Each business type is further defined in the content glossary on the right of your screen. If you have a question about whether your entity qualifies as one of the business types, you should contact your company officers or a government contracting officer for guidance. First, you will select your country and state of incorporation. These fields are defaulted to the country and state that your DUNS address has been set for. If your entity is incorporated in a different country and state, then you can change them as needed. Then you may enter your company's security level and the security level of your highest clearance employee. Having a security clearance level may be a requirement to participate in certain government opportunities. Responses for these fields are optional. Next, you can enter your entity's business types. Be sure to read the definitions for each of these types to ensure you are correctly selecting the right identifiers for your organization. You should only select the identifiers that match your entity status. Since I had selected business or organization on the purpose of registration step, this is already pre-filled. You can also choose if your entity qualifies for one of the values listed in the next dropdown, such as a foundation, hospital, or educational institution. Selecting educational institution displays a list of different types of educational institutions. You will then need to select a specific subtype, such as private university and college, or veterinary college, and add it to your list. If you incorrectly selected a type, you can remove it by selecting it and clicking Remove. Next, you can select if your business is certified as a Department of Transportation Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. If your entity is a federally recognized Native American entity, select the type that applies. Next, indicate if your business or organization is foreign owned and located, a small agricultural cooperative, limited liability company, subchapter S corporation, or manufacturer of goods. Next, you must indicate the form of your business or organization as defined by the IRS. If you are a non-U.S. entity, you may choose international organization or other. You must also select your entity's profit structure. Next, you can select the socioeconomic categories that apply to your entity. Be sure that you are correctly identifying your entity based on the definitions provided in the glossary. In some cases, the selection you choose may provide you with additional categories to select. You can also select multiple categories. You must also enter your entity's financial information so that the government can provide you the grant or financial assistance funds. It is required for all to select a response to the question that your entity accepts credit cards as a form of payment. You are required to select your account type and enter your account information for electronic funds transfer or EFT. 
EFT information is not mandatory if you are a non-U.S. entity. Enter your ABA routing number and account number. The name of the financial institution will be derived based on the ABA routing number that you provide. You must also provide the automated clearinghouse, or ACH, of your bank. This is necessary should problems occur with your EFT. You can contact your bank for this information if you do not have it. Finally, if you wish, you can also include your remittance information. This information will allow the government to mail you a check in case your EFT does not work. In the Executive Compensation section, you are asked to provide information which supports Recovery Act reporting requirements. If 80% or more of your annual gross revenue and $25 million or more in your annual gross revenue comes from U.S. federal contracts, subcontracts, loans, grants, subgrants, and or cooperative agreements, answer yes to the first question. By answering yes to the first question, you must answer the second question regarding whether the public has access to the salary information for the five highest paid senior executives in your business or organization. This is often made available in your Securities and Exchange Commission filings. If yes, you do not need to enter this information again here. If no, you must enter the name, title, and compensation for each executive here. You must also answer if you have any criminal proceedings against your entity. Sam will ask you a series of qualifier questions. Are you bidding on a solicitation that contains the FAR provision 52.209-7 or have you been awarded a contract that contains FAR Clause 52.209-8? If so, select Yes. If you answered Yes to the first question, then you must answer if your business or organization has more than $10 million in active federal contracts and or grants. If you have answered Yes to the first two questions, you must provide an answer to the third question concerning any proceeding against your entity in the last five years. If you select yes, you must provide additional information about each proceeding. For each proceeding, you must enter the date, instrument, Instrument number, state, type of proceeding, disposition, and the description of the proceeding.
Click Save and Continue when you have entered the information. The final step in Core Data is to indicate whether or not you agree to have your entity's information publicly searchable on SAM. If you select to opt out of public search, your record will not come up during searches of SAM's public website. Please note that your information will still be available upon a Freedom of Information Act request, as well as to government users. Upon completion of the Core Data section, you will be presented with a review page. If you wish to make any changes, you can click on an Edit button to return to the desired section. Please note, once you click Save and Continue at this point, your entity's record will be considered a work in progress and will be publicly available unless you decided to opt out of public display. However, your record is not considered active until you complete all the remaining sections of your SAM registration, submit it, and your registration has been verified. I will highlight that point when we get to it. On this page, you are asked if you want to complete the Points of Contact section at this time. To continue, select Yes and click Next. Before you can submit your entity's registration, you must enter Points of Contact. The Accounts Receivable, Electronic Business, and the Government Business Point of Contact are mandatory for all registrations. In addition, the system will determine other types of POCs that are required based on the information entered in the registration. In addition, you may optionally enter an alternate POC for some of the mandatory types. These will help the government know whom to contact for various questions or issues. If you have one person serving as multiple POC types, you can copy that information for the other POC types. The record must be reviewed in its entirety before you can submit it. You must complete all mandatory fields before you can submit your registration. If you wish to make any changes, you can click on an Edit button to return to the desired section. Click Submit to submit your record. Upon submission, the annual renewal date for the entity registration will be set. Entity registrations must be renewed every 365 days. Your entity will now be in the submitted state. It is important to note that your entity will not be considered active until the IRS has successfully validated the TIN if you were required to provide one, and a cage code has been assigned by DOD. As the entity administrator, you will receive an email notification once the registration has been activated. It should take no more than four days to activate your record. 
If it has been more than four days since you submitted and you have not received an activation email, please contact our help desk at 866-606-8220 or www.fsd.gov. If you fail to recertify your registration every 365 days, your entity will be listed as expired. You can reactivate it by recertifying to the information. You can view your completed and incomplete registrations by using the links on the left side of your MySAM page. When you wish to update your record, click the Update button to start a new draft of your record. However, in this case, because this record is in submitted status, we cannot update it. That concludes this demonstration. If you have questions about the registration process or your record in SAM, you can contact the Federal Service Desk at www.fsd.gov. Thank you for viewing this demonstration of the Entity Management Registration Process.